let your glory be felt in Bethel this morning. We are waiting. We are depending on you. We are watching and we are waiting. Because in you all things lies. And so we thank you Lord God my Savior. Have your way in our lives today. Remember our pastor who is not here. Oh God we ask that you strengthen him. We ask that you keep him. Remember his family. Cover them under the blood. Oh God Almighty. Take full control this morning. Of everyone Lord. Every officer in this place. Oh God Almighty, the moderator. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you for being alive. We thank you for being our right mind. We thank you that you are God and you are the only God. And we thank you, God, that we have realized that you are the God that we must serve. And we are going to serve you, Jesus. Our heart desires to live for you. Our heart desires to worship you. Oh, the storms and the billows but we are going to stick to you Lord so we know you can do it Lord and with you all things are possible so we thank you Lord bless this service today Lord Jesus bless it in a special way and let your will be done give strength to the weak oh God provide for those that are in need Lord God Almighty so many different needs but we know that you are a God who can be touched. And so we thank you and we bless your name. We honor your name, Lord, for being the God we served. Thank you for doing it for us, Lord Jesus. Thank you for opening up doors. Thank you for the blessing you bestowed. Thank you for your keeping care. Thank you for your protection for the past week. Lord, we are in a new week. And we pray, God, that you will keep us. We pray, God, that you will bless us. We pray, God, that you will cover us and protect us from every accident and every danger. Let nothing befall your children. Let your will be done. And let your name, your name, Jesus. <laughs> Glory to God. Let your name be glorified in this place today let us send up the praises let the blessing come down we thank you we honor you and we worship you in jesus name and for jesus sake amen and amen i am blessed i am blessed every day
Hallelujah. You know, I give God thanks. And I give God honor. And I give God praise. And I take a half a minute to tell you of the blessings of God. You know, last Tuesday, I was on my way taking Malik to school on Camp Road. And uh, about 7.42, I hear something scraping off the back of my car. Guess what, saints? That was a trailer slammed into my car. Hit the side that Malik was on. And uh, I'm here today only because of the goodness of God. So when, when I say I'm blessed, I'm blessed. And when you say you are blessed, I believe you are blessed. Because only you know what God has done. And you know, I, I looked at the car. The car is fairly new. I said, good thing the Bible said, vanity of vanity. I did not quarrel. I did not curse off the man. I just say, I won't hear nothing from you. Just give me your papers. Police came and whatever. Saw that he was wrong, whatever. And uh, the good thing about it is that the owner of the vehicle is a beautiful person from the inside. And he said to me, you know what? I'm not even going to contest it. Just go to the insurance and we're going to pay to fix your vehicle. That's another blessing. Because, you know, sometimes when drivers eat others, they claim that, as a matter of fact, the driver was saying that I hit him. The police said what? She was driving in the reverse because he hit me into my back. But, you know, I say this, you know, because God is good. Everywhere you look at it, God is good. The car could have been written off. Malik or I could have been dead. I could have problem with the insurance. God is just so mighty. So when I say, I am blessed, I am blessed. Hallelujah. I saw this morning, there's so much to give God thanks for. Hallelujah. I want to stop now to just say welcome to everyone in the house of God, to our associate pastor, missionary, minister, evangelist, Jean Hilton. Amen. And to all the ministers, to all the choristers, everyone, the children, everyone this morning, God bless you. We are alive. We are in the house of God. And that's enough to give God thanks for. To our visitors, I'm going to just going to ask you to, to stand. Our visitors. Wonderful. Wonderful. You are one of the reasons why we are here. And so we thank and so we thank God for you. If you have not yet received a visitor's package, a blue package, I'm gonna ask you to remain yes, remain standing if you have not received one. And one of our greeters. There's a visitor up front, there are visitors up front, yes. We want to say welcome again to you. And in that package, there is a card. We ask that you take it out. Fill in the, there's, a, there's a card. You fill in the information for us. Tear that portion off and leave it in the offering plate. And we will make sure that we keep in touch with you. More closely, Stefano Brown visiting today and was invited by our, our junior missionary, Stafford Brown. Very Stafford. Oh, wonderful. God bless you. Was invited by Samantha Williams and the Minots, brother and sister. Minot. Where is Brother Minot? Brother Albert. Somewhere in the old, but God bless you. We're happy to have you. God bless you. We pray that you'll continue to enjoy the service. Are you blessed saints? I just want to sing that song one more time. Just stand and sing it like you're really blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. Every day that I live, I am blessed. When I 
God bless you out of Washington. God bless you. Hope you're enjoying the service and you will be blessed in Jesus' name. Sister, Sister Roy, Sister Roy. Oh, you know, Sister Roy has been out of service because of illness, but she's here today and we bless God for her amen and today is a very special day here in Bethel we are also celebrating the 45th year of the voice of holiness as you know the voice of holiness is broadcast on RJR every Sunday night at 10 10:45. It used to be a little later, but now it is at 10:45. And believe it or not, the broadcast is a blessing to many people. We here may not know the the reach, or we may not know how impactful the voice of holiness broadcast is, but it is because from time to time you hear people who are not of this church speak about it. You hear. People wrote, people writing to say how oh, blessed they are. As a matter of fact, I have a manager at another branch. Every time she sees me, she said, I listened to the broadcast last night. And she said, wherever she is, she has to ensure that she's either at home or near a radio because she must listen to the Voice of Holiness broadcast. It's some people that just talk on the Voice of Holiness. And it is doing a wonderful, a wonderful work in the in Radio Land. You know, people are healed, people are blessed, people are, are spirits are lifted. Because sometimes, you know, people are down, but just a word or the song. I have people from other churches when they want to know one of those old time songs. They say, Sister Mallet, can you get the words of this song? Or do you know the word of this song? Because I know that I always hear you sing this song on the voice of holiness broadcast. So people are blessed in many ways, in different ways. And so we want to keep it alive. We want to continue. This is how some of us minister. Huh? Our input into the voice of holiness ministry is how some of us minister to the world. Because some of us are so shy. But when we come and we, 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 we sponsor a, a, a broadcast or we give an offering towards the broadcast or we sing on the choir we are indeed ministering amen and so this morning we want to take a little a couple of minutes to just emphasize and to just worship and 
praise God for the voice of holiness which the first the first broadcast was done where anybody know where okay I hear somebody say Sav Savana Lamar some people say Sav Lamar <laughs> well whatever that's that's where the first broadcast came from and today all the churches of the Bethel body are participants because as you can see from time to time we have ministers from the various assemblies coming in and preaching on the broadcast or doing something towards the broadcast so this morning we want to just honor God and to and to collect a very special offering towards this ministry to start us off, I'm going to have the choir sing that song, that broadcast song called Unto Holiness. church because that song resonates with Bethel. Amen? You know Sister Crum Crumbie? Is she here? I understand she's here. Sister Crumbie? Oh, she's outside. Well, she's a, can I say, a fan of the broadcast and she travels all the way from Montego Bay just to be with us this morning but I understand she's on the outside so as soon as she gets in I'll just have her give a word of greeting is there someone with a testimony of what the broadcast has done for you is there someone who was blessed or, or, or has ever been blessed by the broadcast don't be shy now. Let me see all those who listen to the broadcast. <laughs> oh, you're shy. All right. Let me say it again. I don't know which part you didn't hear. Let me see all those who listen or who have ever listened. That's a different statement, right? Who have ever listened to the broadcast wonderful wonderful let me see anybody who has ever been blessed wonderful so can one of you just come and tell me how the broadcast has blessed you I understand sister Luke wants to share a testimony is that about the broadcast oh coming to you. Nobody wants to share? Come, sweetheart. 
This is one of our visitors, and she wants to share how the broadcast has blessed her. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I listen to the voice of holiness every Sunday morning, and that's what helps me to get here this morning. So I give thanks to all of you here in the name of Jesus. Amen. She listens to the broadcast every night, every Sunday night. And that is why, that is what brought her here. Amen. So you see. Bless God. Anybody else? Okay, moving along. We want, as I said before, we want you to, the, the broadcast per program is $15,000. So on a weekly basis, we have to pay $15,000 to for that broadcast to be aired and so this morning i know some of you are burning to give you want to give and so we, we have some some envelopes the ushers have the envelopes just raise your hand for those who need an envelope to put that special offering if you don't have the physical cash now we're going to ask you to just write on a piece of paper the amount that you are going to give towards this broadcast with your name, possibly your telephone numbers, and your address. Just kidding. But your name, and we will accept that as a pledge for you to give towards the broadcast. Right? We want everyone to participate. Everyone. If everyone in this church here gave a 2000 or so dollars. Minimum. Just write it on a paper. The Lord, believe me, the Lord is going to give it back to you tenfold. Because you are ministering. You are working. You are helping to spread the gospel. Amen? So you may not have it now. But take that envelope, put that money in it, or put that pledge paper in it, and when you, when you put it in the offering plate, just say, God, breathe on it. Amen? And for those who want envelope. Yes. Nice. I see the envelopes going. Wonderful. The usher needs some more envelopes. Amen. This is a worthy cause. This is the work of the Lord. This is ministry. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me see all those who like to be in ministry. All those who think ministry is good. Amen. Keep those hands up and let the, uh, the usher come to you with an, with an envelope. Keep those hands up. All those who love ministry. No, nobody loves ministry anymore. <laughs> All those who love ministry, let me see your hands. Keep them up. Ushers, look for those hands. Ushers, keep them up. Yes, sister, keep them up. You have yours already. Wonderful. Keep them up. <laughs> Amen. It's wonderful to be in ministry, man. Amen. Okay, so we're moving right along. So now, because of this ministry and the great work that is being done in this ministry, we are... Choristers? You love ministry? Let me yeah, see your hands. Yeah. Let me see your hands. Keep them up. Look at those hands. Them. Yes, keep them up. Wonderful, wonderful. Wonderful. Give them envelopes, man. Yes. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. Some of them already have. And so we, are, we want this ministry to continue. Right? We want to continue to minister to people. And, you know, some of the, 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 the names that are prominent in this ministry, evangelist books. You know, the prayer warrior for, for Voice of Holiness, Sister Dorothy. Amen. There was a time when, and we have various, various moderators now, but we have a time when Sister Sharon Palmer 
used to be the person who, you know, would read on the broadcast. Amen? And so, the Lord always provides people to carry on this ministry. Amen? Amen. And so now we are going to just ask the... We're going to be collecting those envelopes. But at this time, we're going to be asking Dr. Minister Ferguson to come and just breathe a word of prayer for the ministry. We're going to ask you to stand and we're going to ask the Lord's blessing on the Voice of Holiness program as we sing the song for you i am praying for you hallelujah I am oh we give you glory god hallelujah for you. we honor you I we praise you jesus you are the great god lord jesus you have given us a command that we should go out everywhere and preach the gospel. God, we thank you today for the voice of holiness ministry. Oh God, that has been preaching this gospel on the airways. Oh God, for these 45 years. Lord, you see the large number of lives that have been touched by this ministry. God, you see the many souls that have been through this ministry oh God and we believe by faith that many more will be saved oh God through the continuation of this ministry I pray in the name of Jesus oh God that we bless those who organize and plan the ministry I pray God that we bless those who moderate on the program I pray, God, that we bless the speakers, oh God, as they deliver the word of the program and the choir for their faithful ministry. I pray in the name of Jesus that your divine will and your divine purpose will be accomplished. Oh God, that many, many more will continue to be touched. I pray, God, that we'll open up the windows of heaven. Oh God, and pour out a blessing. God, you see the various costs that are associated with the ministry. Oh God, but you are our Father, God, and you are rich in houses and lands. So we thank you for the provision. We pray once more, God, and say thanks for all that has been accomplished. For all those who have labored. For all those who have toiled. And we thank you for the fruit that has been reaped for this ministry. Blessed today, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen. God bless you. As I said before, Sister Crombie, traveling all the way from Montego Bay to be with us this morning. Just going to ask her to come and give us a word of greeting. Praise the Lord, everyone. The Lord. Come on. We co I come here this morning to praise the Lord because he's worthy of all praises. It's truly a blessing another here to be here with you to celebrate the anniversary of the Voice of Holiness broadcast. It's truly a blessing. It's always my pleasure to be here. Let me say the, the broadcast has been a blessing. It has been a tremendous help to many. I too from 1980. I'm a witness to this broadcast. If it never mean me any good, I will leave it alone. At Bethel, God is moving. It is my desire to live for the Lord and to continue to be a good supporter and a 
permanent listener to the voice of holiness. God bless you. A firm supporter and a permanent listener. Amen. We thank God this morning again. And we pray that you will give to the glory and honor of the Lord. We're going to be collecting our offering. And for those who will be, for those who will be giving towards the anniversary, there is a special, is there a special basket for the Okay, for those who will be giving towards the anniversary, we're going to ask you to lay it on the altar right here. You can just put it on the table at the front there. For those, for the, the offering for the... Okay, thank you. Place it here, okay? Let us all stand as we repeat the giver's creed. First Chronicles... 16, 28 to 34. Let us all stand. Those who are able to stand, if you are not sick, give unto the Lord, ye kindreds of the people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fair before him all the earth. The world also shall be stable, that it be not moved. Let the heavens be glad, and let the earth rejoice. And let men say among the nations, The Lord reigneth. Let the sea roar, and the fullness thereof. Fields rejoice, and all that is therein. Then shall the trees of the wood sing out at the presence of the Lord, because he cometh to judge the earth. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Amen? Let's now give cheerfully unto the Lord. Minister Allison asks you to bless the Lord's the offering in Jesus' name. God, in the name of Jesus, we give you thanks. And this morning, as we worship you in, in, as we worship you in giving up our offering and tithes, I pray that God will bless the people today as they give, come to provide for us. Bless and sanctify that it will be prayer and to your world. Bless it this morning in Jesus' name. Amen.
And I stood and I said, Lord, my daughter has graduated from school and even though she had gotten through to go to university, she had to defer because she didn't have the money. And she has, been, she has sent out a lot of application letters. So she said that she, I went home from work one evening and said, Mommy, I feel worthless sitting at home, not doing anything. I said, when God opened a door for you, many more is going to be open. So just wait. Anyway... Elder Rose said that he wants a report. 
Sunday, well, as I said, while I was standing there, I said, Lord, my daughter said she needs a job and she feels worthless at home. I'm standing in the gap for her. She's not here, so I'm standing in the gap for her. Monday evening while going to college, I was standing at half a tree and I got a call on my phone saying that, where's my, um, where's my daughter? Because my name is on the earth. Thing. And I said, she's at home. The person said from a government ministry, tell her to dress for work tomorrow and come in for an interview. When she went to work, the place in the morning, she started working. She got the job on, on Tuesday, she started working on Tuesday. And while I was at work Tuesday, Minister of Labor called again and said that she is supposed to come on Wednesday to start another job on Wednesday. So God not only provided one job for her, but the Lord provided two jobs. Saints, what I want to ask this morning, is there anything too hard for God to do? There is nothing too hard for God to do. And I'm just saying, for those who are seeking, for those who are asking, it might be an illness or whatever you're asking the Lord for. God is never late. He's always on time. Just trust God and believe Him for what you need. Wonderful testimony. Hallelujah. Every Sunday we come, we say, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. Hallelujah. Believe it, saints. And he will see you through. Just before our speaker comes, we're just going to ask the choir to just minister one more time. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, the Lord has gone to prepare a place for us. A place where there will be no more tears. Hallelujah. No more pain. No more sorrows. Hallelujah. We just want to bless him this morning for that place. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Can you just bless him this morning for that place? That splendor, hallelujah. Oh God, we thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Can't you wait? Can't wait to see him. Mm. To you come for his face. Oh God, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mighty God, can't wait. Shake hands with the earth. Oh, the twenty and the four. The twenty and the four. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I said I can't wait.
Let me ask everyone to stand as I introduce our speaker for today in the person of Minister Tyrell Morgan. Let's receive him in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. We praise the Lord, everyone. Let's just lift our hands and worship Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. We worship Jesus. And Jesus alone. Hallelujah. Jesus alone. Alone, 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 alone. Tell your neighbor, don't lose your focus on Jesus. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, if you lose your focus on Jesus, you're going to miss heaven. You're going to miss heaven. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Search me, Lord. Hallelujah. If there's anything that prevents me today from being raptured, search me, Lord. Oh, Lord. Search me of evil thoughts, evil actions. Lord, search me of every dark thing that's lurking inside of me. Things that I've hidden from myself. Things that I've hidden from church folks. Lord, things that I've even tried to hide from you. Lord, I expose my heart because I've got to let it go to enter in. Hallelujah. Lord, search me. Hallelujah. Wash me, Lord. Shake me, God. Don't let me sleep too late. Lord, I've got to make it in due time. Before the heaven's door close. Search me, Lord. Shake me, God. Hallelujah. Lord, purge this congregation. Ah, yes, Holy Ghost. Sit upon us. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost rain upon us. If there is any unclean spirit in us, Lord Jesus, any unclean spirits, fallen angels, rulers of darkness, principalities and powers, spiritual wickedness in high places, Lord, if it is in us today, let the fire of the Holy Ghost stir it up, burn it out and cast it out of your house. Whatever it takes, Lord God, straighten us out. Hallelujah. Whatever it takes, transform us, God, into the glorious image of Jesus Christ. We worship you and we honor you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Everybody say, in Jesus' name. You may be seated. You may be seated. You may be seated. Amen. Greetings to everyone, to the Lord Jesus Christ the leadership core of this church amen on this very special occasion where we celebrate 45 years of the broadcast and um, in the spirit of the broadcast preachers are given 13 minutes so pray that I flow in that spirit and tradition who knows for you I'm praying mark 9 verses 1 to 13 we want to lift up a theme today. Give me a fresh vision of Jesus. Oh, somebody just lift your voice and say, Lord, give me a fresh vision of Jesus. A fresh vision of Jesus. Oh, we worship you. Yes, Holy Ghost. We want to declare victory today. That every spirit that's not of God is subject to him. Despite what the devil is trying to do in our young people. Going across this nation. The Lord is glorified and is high and lifted up. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. And every tongue that rises in judgment against us shall be condemned. Mark 9. There are five dynamics that work in this chapter. Five dynamics. We see Jesus first dynamic Jesus is transfigured and transformed before his disciples 
The second dynamic in that chapter is that a deaf and a dumb spirit is cast out by Jesus. Third dynamic that Jesus prophesies of his death. And in fact, he prophesied that he had already been delivered. So he was already betrayed while he was walking with them. Somebody had made up their mind already, even in his own company, to sell him out. So he prophesied. Fourth dynamic, the disciples quarrel among themselves about who should be the greatest. And the fifth dynamic in that chapter is that Jesus gives radical principles on how to escape hell and enter life eternal five dynamics of that chapter the first point we want to raise is that we must accept the calling and the leading of the holy ghost to get a vision of jesus many of us have accepted the call of god over our lives we heard the word of truth we heard the gospel we responded we're baptized in jesus name and we received the holy ghost that's the first call of god for us to come out of sin and straighten up our life and set our lives in order we heard the call in our spirit we didn't understand the call but we heard the call and we responded and obeyed but not many of us have accepted the leading of the holy ghost because then we are stuck in a place of inertia stagnancy unfruitfulness and spiritual barrenness and it's possible to do the church thing accept the call and be found in the house for every service but we are not being led by the holy ghost in our personal lives we are not following him outside of the four walls of the church we must accept the calling of God and the leading of God. Now God is a God of love and purpose and order and peace and joy. And the Lord will sometimes lead us into some difficult places. And that's why many of us will accept the call but not the leading. The Bible said when Jesus was going to launch his ministry, he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil that's a contradiction of faith how is it that you brought me into this thing packed me up with power gave me purpose and 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 you cause uh, prophets and men of old to speak and prophesy of jesus and here i am the anointed man of god for the bible said god anointed jesus of nazareth miracles signs and wonders he was loaded with power and glory and purpose. But the Bible said, God led Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. My God Almighty. Hallelujah. The leading of the Holy Ghost is difficult at times when he pulls us into spiritual wilderness to be attacked by the devil. How could you love me, God, and leave me to the enemy to rip me in pieces? How could you give me this marriage, this blessed marriage and this blessed family? And now the devil, Lord, has possessed my husband and my children and is ripping my life apart. I have been led into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Oh, hallelujah. But if you're anointed, the hand of God can't come off you. It can't leave you alone. The hand of God is upon you. In this chapter, Jesus took with him his inner circle. Peter, James, and John. Very special men. Peter had the revelation of who Jesus is. James was a man that flowed with the wisdom of God. And John flowed with the love of God. When you read their writing, you see the areas of their life. They had some issues. And Peter had... Issues with his emotions. Sometimes he couldn't straddle the line between revelation and emotions. Sometimes his emotions got ahead of him. There are other times that revelation guided his life. James and John, they also had temper problems. They had self-esteem problems. But they loved the Lord. 
John was the one that was favored by God. And he drew him near to him. Peter, James, and John. The Bible said, Jesus leadeth them up into a high mountain apart by themselves. This is not easy. To be led by Jesus into a high mountain physically. I've had the pleasure or the, the, the pain of trying to climb Blue Mountain. And those of you who have ever tried to climb Blue Mountain, put your hands up. Not many. It takes a very brave soul to climb Blue Mountain. We started off very early in the morning. It was cold and a lot of fog. And we merrily went up. We thought it was fun. We had a little bottle of water. And we started climbing. But somewhere along this journey up Blue Mountain, this little boy from Mandeville Bush started to falter by the wayside. I started to fall behind the crowd. And I enviously looked at people that were going up the mountain. Very strong and fit. Because their body and their mind was conditioned for the journey. And so I had my stick and I climbed in the dark. I was there with a few folks struggling behind. And one of the, the worst things about climbing a mountain is that the gradient of the mountain is continually against you. There is hardly any place flat that you can stand up and your back rests. So after a while your back starts to hurt you because you're just going up and up and up. After a while, if you have asthmatic conditions, they will start to act up because the ear gets very thin on the mountain. Some people, professional climbers, will carry oxygen tanks to some of the highest mountains on the earth. And it's not just oxygen, it's not just the gradient, it's the gravity that's against you. You're going against gravity, you're trying to define gravity. And weariness and coldness sets in on this high mountain. But Jesus was leading the way up this mountain. And it's not just a physical mountain, but I believe it's a spiritual mountain. He was carrying them on a breaking journey. Oh, hallelujah. You cannot follow Jesus and not be broken down. You cannot follow Jesus and not have your pride and your ego lost by the way. You have got to leave it at the base of the mountain. Because before we started Blue Mountain, they said you cannot carry any load. And I thought a bottle of water is not a load. A bottle of water is a necessity. But somewhere up there, you find out that a bottle of water is a heavy load. And you want to drink the water very fast. So that it becomes very light to you. No wonder the scripture says if you are going to follow Jesus, what we have got to lay aside? Every weight and sin we have got to lay it aside before we start this journey and a lot of people are struggling in their christianity because they have the weight and the sin going up the mountain expecting to be blessed by god and sin is in your life but jesus did not lead them into a valley because in the valley there is limited vision on the high mountain, there is superiority of vision. 360 degrees, you can see to the north, the south, the east, and the west. You can see all around you. You can see your enemies when they're coming. You can see them gathering forces and strategizing. God leads you to high mountains to see. Superior vision to see. And it takes a sacrifice to see. And he took them apart by themselves. This was not a popular thing to do. This was not something to carry the multitude or the crowd. Not everybody could last on this mountain. These men were sanctified men. And this spiritual mountain was a place of spiritual vision, wisdom, revelation, power, and authority. That's what God wants to pour out in this apostolic church today. Vision, wisdom, revelation, power, and authority. But this leading requires isolation. Isolation. And many of us are not ready to be isolated. We are so hooked up to people. 
We are feeding on the agenda and the opinions of people. And some of you are hooked up in relationship and you don't want to leave that man or that woman because you're seeing life through their eyes. When they're happy, you are happy. When they're sad, you're sad. They're like a drug in your mind. A drug in your spirit. And you know the relationship is wrong. But you can't leave maybe that friend or maybe it's an intimate partner. You can't leave them because you're hooked up to their vision. But you cannot be a follower of Jesus and be a follower of the ideas of men. You have got to leave men behind. Oh, hallelujah. Because the Lord is high and holy. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. The thoughts of God are always in opposition to the thoughts of men. And God, when you walk with him, will blow your mind. Hallelujah. God even said to us, if you ask of me, and you believe in faith, I will do it exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you could ever think or ask of me. Hallelujah. That means the Lord says, I'm going to answer your prayer. But I'm not just going to answer it. I'm going to do it exceedingly. I'm going to do beyond what you thought. In fact, when you walk into the Lord, he said his blessings are going to overtake you. Oh, hallelujah. And those of us who drive, you know that sometimes a man overtake you. They draw up beside you and then they cut in in front of you and they go ahead and you find yourself chasing them. That's the sort of blessing that the Lord is going to pour out on you. The blessing that will draw up beside you, go ahead of you. Hallelujah. And blessing just cover you. Hallelujah. To the left or the right. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. Not just follow me, but it's going to overtake me. Hallelujah. My God Almighty. So the Bible says that Jesus was transformed before them at this high mountain. Not in the valley, but in the high mountain. Jesus has a personal revelation for them. And he transformed himself and revealed his glory. Now the word transfigured comes from the word metamorpho. From what we have, metamorphosis. And we see it in nature that the Lord has the butterfly. The butterfly is a caterpillar before it can fly. It creeps and it's a very greedy animal, eating up. And then after a while, after eating up all the leaves, all the things that you have planted, he cocoons himself and stays there for weeks, hanging on a tree. Then all of a sudden, the cocoon begins to break slowly. And miraculously, wings begin to appear. And something that could not fly before, but could only creep and eat on the ground or on the tree, suddenly begins to fly and have superiority over the air and over the atmosphere. A caterpillar to a butterfly. And as in the natural, so in the spiritual. Many of us come into Christ and we are creeping. And we are eating, desiring the sincere milk of the word of God. Wanting to grow. Wanting to get strong. Wanting to be rooted and grounded in God. But sometimes we deceive ourselves. Because in the rooting and the grounding, we want to stay there. But God don't want you to stay there just rooted and grounded. But God wants you to occupy spiritual places. God wants you to ascend on high and do great works for him. God wants you to have dominion, not just of the cattle and the creeping things of the earth. But God wants you to have dominion over the fowls of the air. In Genesis, he says he wants us to have dominion over them. And in the Gospels, God reveals to us that demons are actually fowls of the air. So the apostolic church has been called to have dominion over demons. Dominion over fallen angels. Dominion over evil spirits. Dominion over principalities, works of darkness, rulers. Spiritual wickedness in high places. But you cannot have dominion if your vision has not been elevated. And your vision cannot be elevated if your flesh and yourself and your own agenda has not been broken. God wants to change the pattern of your life. Some of us are stuck in some patterns. Some routines of living that can't, can't cause the glory of God to be ushered in our lives. You're too stuck in a human pattern. You've been trying to pattern your life like other persons. 
But you have been called by God to live a unique holy life. Everything about you ought to be different. Oh, hallelujah. The Bible said your very speech ought to be seasoned with grace. Your time doesn't belong to you when you're in the kingdom. Oh, hallelujah. Kingdom people have a different orientation. A different dominion over time. The world wastes time. And they party all night. But Christians stand up sometimes. We have to break the cycle and the pattern and have to sit up at night and in the morning when others are sleeping we have got to be watching over the night praying hallelujah hallelujah thank you holy ghost god's calling for a generation to break the pattern of your life it's time to lose some sleep hallelujah because the enemy is upon us demons are upon us possessing our young people even our apostolic young people demons are possessing our young people in the schools they're watching vampire shows they're listening to music they're on the internet he's coming in like a flood but the spirit of the living god is lifting up a standard in this church today on friday night i was called into a deliverance session young apostolic girl possessed by a demon oh hallelujah we walked up into that house, started to talk to her. She was denying it. And that's what the devil does. Oh, hallelujah. When you're possessed by a devil, you deny your condition. When you're possessed by a demon, you deny that you have a weakness. The Bible said if you have no, you will say you have no sin, you're a liar. You make God a liar. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We started to talk to her and after a while, the demon identified himself by name and started to speak and start tried to change form he tried to change identity to all kind of different persons but we pressured him in the holy ghost and after a while he started to cry out we need backup we need backup we need backup oh hallelujah we pressured him in the holy ghost hallelujah 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 and some of you the devil been sitting on you and sitting on your children because there is no pressure you're not pressuring him. When you lift your hands and you worship God. And you're called on the fire of God. The devil is pressured. He can stand the glory of God in your life. When the glory of God rushes into your life. He lifts your vision. And calls you to see things. And identify spirits. Unclean spirits working in your life. Hallelujah. And it's for you to open your mouth with power and boldness and call the spirit by name and command it to come out. It's time for some apostolics to stand and plead the blood in the schools. Teachers, lose the spirit of fear. Some of you have been camouflaged in the glory of God. Wrapping and cocooning yourself. Hiding from men because you don't want them to know that you're apostolic. But the enemy is upon us. And this is a time where you do or die hallelujah hallelujah this is a time where you've got to call prior meeting even sometimes when you call when you're teaching your class you've got to call prior meeting and risk your job and your reputation for the glory of god we cannot allow our young people to be possessed and recently i was watching also another video from another school and i mentioned this a couple of thursday nights ago where the religious education class uh, was experimenting with the spirit of kumina and playing the kumina drum entertaining that demon hallelujah all of a sudden there was a possession and they sent for uh, a revivalist church and a poko band from a revivalist church to come a kumina band to play kumina to get out demons and there was a, a, a an extremity of possession and more demons begin to fill them up oh hallelujah but we don't need the strategy of the world in getting rid of demons. We don't throw holy water to get rid of demons. Ha ha. Hallelujah. We don't put cross on you to burn your flesh to get rid of demons. Hallelujah. Because on Friday night when we lay hands, demons said, don't touch me. But we lay hands. And we are anointed with the olive oil. Hallelujah. All of a sudden he said, it's start to burn. Hallelujah. Oh my God. The anointed demons are afraid of the fire of God. That's why they don't want you to pray. That's why they block your prior life. That's why he's in your life like a roadblock. Blocking up your time.
time blocking up your consecration because he knows if you get up on that high mountain God's going to rip the shrouds off him God's going to show you your enemy get on that high mountain of prayer get on the high mountain of faith and worship get up there and stay up there ah yes on this high mountain, they saw some stuff. They saw Elias or Elijah. They saw Moses. And if you remember in the Old Testament, Moses was also on a high mountain. Spent 40 days, 40 nights on the high mountain. God showed him some stuff. Spoke to him. Straight into his ear. From the mouth of God into the ear of Moses. Moses spent so much time with God that the glory of God was transferred to his face. When Moses came down from the mountain, they could not look upon him. They had to put a veil on his face because of the terror and the might and the power of God. Hallelujah. But that was just an external expression. That was just a transfer of glory on the outside. Jesus, who Moses prophesied and spoke about, he said, God's going to raise up a prophet unto you, like unto me. Hallelujah. Moses prophesied of Jesus. Hallelujah. Elijah prophesied of him. And was a type of Jesus and the spirit and the power by which he came. Moses had the glory on the face. Jesus had the glory on the inside. Hallelujah. So when the Bible said he was transfigured before them. The glory of God. God was manifest in that flesh. And God laid aside the robe of that flesh. Shun his glory. The glory exceeded. Even his very clothes were shining with the glory. The writer said no fuller on earth. Nobody could wash clothes to get it so white. Hallelujah. But the glory seeped through his skin. Glory seek through his blood vessel. The power of God got into his clothes and the lining and the thread. Hallelujah. The glory shone and somebody was afraid because the glory was shining. And God was just showing the type of generation that he's birthing in the earth. The apostolic generation is the only generation that carry the glory of God. We are the only set of people that the devil is afraid of. Because we have Jesus on the inside. Hallelujah. And when he begins to shine. That's why everywhere Jesus went. Demons were afraid of him. And he didn't even open his mouth. Because in that prior session also on Friday. There was another young man in that room. When we told that demon to come out. He said the only way I'm going to come out. And he pointed his hand to that young man and said. I want him. There were things in his life that caused the devil to say, I want him. Some of you need to let go. Some of you young people need to let go of the games that you have been playing on the computer. You need to let go. When we asked this demon, where did he get his strength from? It said, we led this person to go on the internet, YouTube, and to watch beauty videos. Because this person had a self-esteem problem. And when you have an open door of hurt and self-esteem, the devil will walk in and lead you till he possess you. And he pointed at that young man and said, I want him. Because there was a weakness and an entrance and a door. The demons saw it. And demons can see. They know who you are in the spirit. We see in the physical. But they see. So when Jesus walked up to the country of Kadara, the glory of God that was in that flesh was shining bright. All that demon saw was a bright light coming. He knew the son of God was there. And he ran to Jesus and worshipped him and said, I want to be delivered. Hallelujah. Oh my God. God's waiting for the glory to escape from Bethel. 20 South Camp Road. Some of you have been cocooning the glory. Locking it up. Like a dam. Do you know a dam? A dam is a powerful flowing river. That they, that they, they block it up to get the power from the dam to generate electricity. Some of you, the Holy Ghost in you is like a dam. It has been flowing, but some of you stop it. Stop it through disobedience. Stop it because you want to be normal. Stop it because you just want to sit down and be cute. Hallelujah. But you're carrying the glory of God 
on the inside. It's too late to be cute. It's too late to be normal. Apostolic is firebrand. Apostolic, you have glory on the inside. You can't hide. Hallelujah. No man can put a candle under a bushel. You've got to put it on a hill. So that the world can blaze with fire. Jesus said, if you lose your saltness, you're only good to be trodden on the foot. Hallelujah. Ask Jesus to make you a burning light in the earth. Ask Jesus to make you such a shining light that when demons see you coming, they have to come out and run. They are troubled. Your community is too quiet. Some of you need to stir up the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Demons are allergic to the power of the Holy Ghost. Things are too quiet in your house. You need to stir up something. Jesus said, you think I come to give you peace? Jesus said, I come to give a sword and war. Jesus loved the war. Hallelujah. Jesus dressed himself with a garment of war. Hallelujah. We got to dress ourselves with a garment of war. And walk up into the enemy's camp. This is not a bargaining deal. This is a war. Nobody wants no prisoners. Everybody wants to kill. He comes to steal, kill and destroy you. The devil is not sorry for you. He hates you. If you're here and you're a sinner, the devil hates your guts. And he wants to destroy you. And the sin that you have is your money. Sin is like money. And when the devil come and see the sin, he say, yes, I'm shopping at your house today. Oh, hallelujah. Some of you need to get out the money. Get out the sin out of your life. Like Jesus said, the enemy comes and can find nothing in me. Hallelujah. Because the devil sees straight through you. It's a spiritual world. The devil comes, has nothing in me. No bargaining ship, no money, no agreement, no covenant. Nothing is signed between me and the devil. And if you have signed a deal with the devil, to sell your soul, you need to burn up that paper in the spirit today. Those of you who have sold yourself to the devil, and when you lose faith in God, you have sold yourself to the devil. Because if you don't have faith in God anymore, the only thing that will, will inform you and lead you is the word of the devil. Doctrines of devils. Recover your faith in God. Get back to the high mountain of faith. And faithfulness in God. So Jesus carried the glory. On the inside and manifested. The word says be not conformed. To this world. This present system. Of operation. This collective view of sinners. Presided over by the devil. Be not conformed. To countries that legalize homosexuality. And lesbianism. Be not conformed. To this world and a lot of people are trying to use the word of God against God and they're saying don't judge even when sin is staring them in the face they're saying judge not but the Bible says be not conformed to this world but be he transformed by the renewing of your mind this transformation is not something that you just do accidentally. This transformation begins with a renewal of one's mind. Jesus must get a hold of your mind. And Friday night when we asked that demon what doors did it enter through, it said confusion and insanity. Confusion and insanity. If the devil gets a hold of your mind, he will possess you. You have got to every day renew your mind. Oh, hallelujah. The Bible said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So the mind that I need today to defeat the devil is the mind of Jesus. Hallelujah. The mind of Jesus is like a bulletproof metal that comes over your spirit. So every time the devil shoots out an arrow of low self-esteem, 
So you don't look good enough. When you have the mind of Christ and the devil tell you you don't look good enough. Daughters of Zion, you don't have to run to any shop to buy any falls here. You don't have to red up your lips. When the devil try to tear down your self-esteem. That says if you want a man, you've got to begin to show your body parts. Hallelujah. The mind of Christ will get up and tell you that holiness is still the only makeup God knows. Hallelujah. And salvation is the only thing God put on you. Now some of us don't look good, but God put good people in our life. It's the anointing that attracts the favor. Some of us couldn't cook, couldn't clean house, but God bless you with a spouse. It's the anointing and the glory of God that attracted the favor. Oh, come on somebody. So I don't, I don't have to sell out myself to the world. I don't have to conform myself to the ideas and the ideals of the world. To be blessed and to get ahead. Oh, come on somebody. Hallelujah. I've got to be transformed by the renewing of my mind. I need a new mind. I'm sick of my old mind. Some of you inherited the type of mindset that you have from your parents. Your parents, parents, your grandparents. And you defend it. You cannot deliver anybody. You cannot deliver yourself if you hold on to your corrupted mindset. Some people hold on to the spirit of anger and say, I saw my daddy tan. I saw mommy did steer. Father did sleep around and have a lot of women, a lot of children. Don't even know some of them name. You say, I saw daddy did steer. Saw him, saw him wild oats. And you have that mindset that you hug up and you worship and you build an altar in your house. And you say, I saw Marga and family tan. And we now change. Oh, hallelujah. But Jesus wants to give you a new mindset. The Jesus mindset is a different mindset. The mindset of Jesus is a servant mindset. The mindset of Jesus is a mind that will get down in mud and dirt and wash off your foot. Even though he's God. The mindset of Jesus is a mindset that says, when you're killing me, I am still loving you. The mindset of Jesus is a mindset that don't hold grudge. That easily forgives. The mindset of Jesus is not a mindset that come to church, lift up hand and worship God and hold up people in your heart. The Bible said, glory not. Hallelujah. Glory not. Hallelujah. Glory not. Don't say, Jesus, you're worthy. Glory not. If you have strife and unforgiveness in your heart. Because this mindset of Jesus calls for a divine exchange. I have to give up my mind. And that's why a lot of people still in sin. You don't want to give up your mind. You want to hold on to your individuality. You want to hold on to who you are. And the first thing the devil comes, they come to steal is your identity. And your sense of self. And it's called insanity. You begin to lose your mind. And he begins to inform you of who he says you are. But the devil is a liar. And the father or the source of lies. Everything that he has been telling you about yourself is a lie. You've got to reprogram your mind in the word of God. A fresh vision of Jesus. You've got to be conformed to Jesus. And you cannot be transformed by stuff that you're not seeing. Here is a mystery of sight. In the Bible, in Genesis, it said, uh, Jacob was with Laban. And Jacob wanted to leave out from Laban's house. But he wanted to bring some cattle with him. He could not take the pure cattle because the Jews loved to offer up the purest cattle. So Jacob, what he did, while the pure cattle was pregnant and giving birth, the Bible said he cut uh, uh, sticks of poplar tree. And he made some patterns in the tree. And he set it before the pregnant cow when they were giving birth. And put it before their eyes. And whatever they saw, that's the pattern that came out in that animal. It came out ring straight and striped. Whatever you see is what you get. And those of you who, are, who have been pregnant, you know. You know it's true. That you can be marked. Your baby can be marked based on what you have been doing. When you were pregnant. In fact, a lot of, of children have come out depressed because in the pregnancy stage, mothers were depressed. And hugging up the depression and you find the child come out depressed. And when you ask them, I know because I've been there. When you ask the mother, what was happening? Why am I like this? The mother said, when I had you, I was so depressed. 
Because they have been marked by what they saw. Oh, hallelujah. And so it is in the spirit. Some of you have been following the wrong people in the spirit. Hallelujah. I've been producing wrong spirits. Following wrong preachers. Because of your gifting. And your life turned out just like them. And you wonder why. Because whatever you see is what you get. If you want Jesus, you have got to begin to see him. You have got to lose some company to see Jesus. And be transformed by him. Oh, hallelujah. You have got to have Jesus ahead of you. When those disciples were going up to the high mountain, Jesus was leading the way. He never stood behind them and said, go boys, go. I'll meet you at the top. Jesus led the way. So if there was any sweating, Jesus was sweating first. If there was any thirst, Jesus was thirsty first. If there was any tiredness, Jesus was tired first. That was a true leader. That led them all the way to the top. We have got to renew our minds and begin to see Jesus of the Bible. We have got to focus on him. Because he's leading the way. And wherever the leader end up, that's where you are going to end up. I respect people. I respect my pastors and my spiritual leaders. But if I don't see Jesus in them, I won't follow them anymore. I've got to see Jesus in you. And the world wants to see Jesus in you. The Bible says the entire creation groaneth and travaileth together, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. They're not waiting for a lukewarm carbon copy, copy of Jesus. They want the real deal. They want when you pray, they feel the fire of God. They want when you pray, they are healed. They want the real Jesus. They are running into the church because they want the glory of God. Hallelujah. As the Obia men have deceived them, have failed them, have taken their money, deceived them. But we have the glory of God. We have the mind of Jesus. The most awesome mind on the earth is the mind of Jesus. In the mind of Jesus, all things are possible. There is no doubt, no fear, no weakness in the mind of Jesus. I need his mind. In a time like this, where the, the very atmosphere is so oppressive, I need the mind of Jesus. Sometimes you've got to travail and groan, woman of God, in your room by yourself if you want the mind of God. Paul said, I have to travail until Christ is formed in you. I've got to travail like the woman. Woman in labor feels some pain and she begins to cry out, waste her body. So it is sometimes when you're praying, you've got to, oh my God, travail and groan. You begin to cry sometimes when you're traveling and interceding because you want the mind of Jesus. We cannot respond to God out of fear. We see even after Jesus revealed his glory that the disciples were afraid. And the first Trinitarian church was almost established on the high mountain of Revelation. And Peter said, make we build three church. Let us immortalize this moment. Let us celebrate this moment and build a permanent structure. But you see, the glory of God cannot be contained. The glory of God cannot be locked up. It must escape like a name brand perfume. When you open a bottle of Isimayaki, you know Isimayaki is in the room. You can't hide it with a cheap $150 perfume from downtown. Come on somebody, you know quality. Whether you want to smell it or not, you, you open it and you smell it. Quality. Hallelujah. So is the glory of God. If it's inside of you, it's going to come out. They responded to the power and the move of God out of fear. And the Bible said, now, fear produces confusion. And where confusion is, every evil work is present. And the evil work there was idolatry. They wanted to worship Elijah and Moses. Hallelujah. But when Jesus revealed his glory, it's for Jesus alone to get the glory. Nobody else can get the glory. Elijah's time was past. Moses' time was past. They spoke of Jesus. Jesus said, all that was written in the Psalms and the prophets spoke concerning me. Hallelujah. Jesus was a real deal. God manifesting flesh. 
He was a finality of God. All of God's love and power was revealed in that man. There was nobody else after him. He is the first and he is the last. Hallelujah. And so they said, make we build three church. Make we start a Trinitarian thing. Hallelujah. But the Bible said, suddenly, the glory shifted. And they saw Jesus only. And that's why they mock us and say, you foolish Jesus only people. We are not ashamed to confess we are Jesus only. Only Jesus could have lifted us from the world of sin. Only Jesus could have lifted our feet from the miry clay. Only Jesus could have set my spirit on a rock to stay. Only Jesus could have overshadowed my fear and my doubts. And caused me to speak in tongues. Only Jesus could remove all my inhibitions. And pull me near to his side. Only Jesus could move the middle wall of partition and give me peace with God. Only Jesus could justify me with God. Only Jesus could lift me from a life of sin. Only Jesus could reach into my future even before I was born and cause my sins to be passed away. Only Jesus could heal my body. Only Jesus could set me free. Only Jesus can lift me when I'm gloomy and low and depressed. Only Jesus can do it. Only Jesus can put a running in my feet when I don't feel like running. Only Jesus Jesus can change my name, change my nature, change my walk with one touch. Only Jesus could lay his hands on my throat when I couldn't speak for a week. Only Jesus could remove the spirit of infirmity. Only Jesus could cast off that demon out of you. No obvious man could do that. No psychologist could do that. Restoring your mind, restoring your peace, restoring your joy. Only Jesus. So when we get down on our knees and we begin to worship, hallelujah, we begin to say, No, He not that the Lord, He is God. It is He that has made us and not we ourselves. Come and worship before His footstool. Only Jesus. And nobody else. Sometimes you have got to put aside your husband as much as you love him. Your wife as much as you love her. Sometimes you have got to put aside your job. And see only Jesus. Sometimes in your office you have got to speak in tongues. The Holy Ghost giving the utterance. Sometimes you have got to lift your hands and stir up the atmosphere. With a spirit of praise. Only Jesus could have given you that job that you were not qualified for. Only Jesus could give you that promotion in a time of recession. Only Jesus. Could deliver you from that accident when the devil wanted to wipe you out hallelujah he came on the left he came on the right only jesus could have caused your soul to escape like the bird from the snare only jesus could have protected you when demons came to your front door and not hallelujah and said they wanted you only jesus could have raised up a standard and caused you to wake up in the midnight hour and begin to plead the blood and speak in tongues only jesus could have strengthened you when you had five fibroids in your womb only Jesus could have caused you to have that baby. My God Almighty. Hallelujah. Only Jesus could have regulated your blood pressure. Only Jesus. Only Jesus. I see nobody else but him. I worship nobody else but him. Fear blocks our vision of Jesus. Many of us have a fear. That's blocking our vision. We're afraid of stepping out. Afraid of being different. Afraid of being anointed. Sometimes when the power of God starts to come on you, you squeeze it in. Hallelujah. And you begin to lose your mind and you put your mind somewhere else. But don't resist the Holy Ghost anymore. Don't be stiff naked. God has a great anointing. And he wants to birth in your soul. Hallelujah. When the anointing power of God starts to run down on you like a river, just open up your mouth and speak in tongues. And manifest the power of God. The glory is on the move. It cannot be contained. The voice came as we wrap up. The voice came said, this is my beloved son. Hear him. This is not two gods speaking. This is one God that's in the flesh. And he just caused his voice to sound from the cloud. Because the Bible said no priest can be sent into ministry except there's a confirmation on their life. So the voice had to come as a confirmation. That's why we speak in tongues. Because the voice that comes out of my spirit when I speak in tongues. This is God saying I have approved. My God Almighty. 
the Holy Ghost in your belly speaking in tongues. God said, I approve of this vessel. Yes, me live. This is my home. I am approved by God. Do any demon challenge your authority? You are approved by God. This is my beloved son. Son there means manifestation. This is me. Hear him. Who don't hear them anymore? Because the Jews were so tied to the doctrine of Moses, the letter of the law. They were so tied to the prophets. But now they had to receive a new doctrine, the doctrine of Jesus. So that's why he said, hear him. We don't need anything else but Jesus. We don't need any other book or material but the book of Jesus. But Jesus said, when I come back to judge the earth, my words are going to judge you. Hallelujah. Other church group, they think the Bible needs some help, so they develop another book. And they go into desert and say they got revelation and they pack up the revelation in the book. A little black book and they walk and try to deceive people. Those are a bunch of demons. Anybody come to you to convince you of anything about God and don't come with the Bible. They come with another book. That's a demon. An unclean spirit. Rebuild them and don't receive them in your house. The Bible said don't even beat them. God speak. Don't even tell them hello. Because any man coming to learn of Jesus won't come to teach you. Any man coming to learn of Jesus will come to learn. Say, I don't know a thing. Teach me. And a lot of people are filled up with their own opinion and ideas. And they will never know Jesus. We have got to empty ourselves of our own ideas before we begin to hear Jesus. We have, begin to, we have to begin to unclutter our spirit from the voice of the world to hear Jesus. All the things that they told you about yourself is a lie. Hear Jesus said to you. He loves you. He loves you. Hear Jesus saying to you. I have purpose and calling for you. No matter what you have done. No matter what kind of spirit is in your life. Hear Jesus. Hear and your soul shall live. You want the Holy Ghost begin to hear Jesus. My God, when you get to this altar, begin to lift your hands and begin to worship Jesus. Black out everything and everyone around you. Begin to hear Jesus. And the voice that you hear will come in your spirit and your soul. And God will begin to use your own tongue to speak. Hear Jesus. Woo. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Somebody breathe the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, put your right hand over your ears. Say Jesus. Put your right hand over your left ear. Say Jesus. Tabashanda. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. I unclutter your spirit today from the junk of the world. Yikashanda. Hallelujah. I unclutter your spirit from demonic doctrines and philosophies and ideas. I rinse it with the blood of Jesus. Hear Jesus. Ooh, you shall live and not die. I bind your spirit of suicide. Hallelujah. I pull you out in the name of Jesus. I rip you from the spirit of God people. Spirit of suicide and depression. The people of God shall live. They shall not die. Hallelujah. 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 Spirit of death. I remove you from the throat of God's people. I remove you from the ears of God people. I rebuke in the name of Jesus. We shall live. Not die. No weapon. Hear Jesus. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. No weapon. No weapon. They saw no man anymore. The glory of God will exceed everything and everyone in our lives. When we lose our vision of people, we will see the fullness of God's power. Isaiah said in the year King Uzziah died. I saw something. In the year King Uzziah died, I saw something. I never saw it before. Uzziah was in my way. I was so occupied with prophesying for the king. I was so wrapped up in people's company. But in the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I saw him high. 
I saw him lifted up. I saw his glory. He was filling the temple. I saw angels lifting up their wings. I saw them. I saw them saying, holy. Holy. Oh, my God. Holy. Holy. Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Hey, God. Hallelujah. I see you, Jesus. Hi. My God. Holy Ghost. Yes, Lord. You're here. Lift your hands and worship him. The Lord is here. High and holy above this congregation. Huh? High and holy. High and holy above the earth. I see you, Jesus, high and lifted up. I see you robed with victory. Ha -ha. I see you robed with war. I see you robed with my healing. I see you come down with my deliverance. Hallelujah. I bind up fear. I bind up unbelief. I see the Lord high. High, high, high. And holy. Hallelujah. I see him high. Come on, see him high right now. Magnify him. Hallelujah. I see you high. Ooh. I'm tired of this valley Christianity. I see you high. Hallelujah. High and holy. You're high and holy. Hey, hallelujah. You're high and holy. Hallelujah. Lord, you're high and holy. Hallelujah. Lord, you're high and holy. Lord, we worship you. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody help me get up in that high mountain. Haya Shanda. Holy Ghost. High mountain of worship. Ika Shanda. High mountain of praise. High and holy. Come on, let a song arise in your soul. It's a new song. It's a new song. It's a new song. It's a new song. The high and holy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. High and holy. High and holy. I'm tired of seeing myself, God. Lazarus. Comfort. That stone has got to go from your praise. There's a stone blocking your praise. You want to praise him, but you can't praise him. A big, heavy stone. Disappointment, hurt, fear. Mm. Hallelujah. Come on, change your vision, change your focus. See Jesus on that cross right now, high and lifted up. Blood is streaming down from his hands. Blood and water is gushing out from his side. Hallelujah. And finally, as we wrap up, the Bible said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Hallelujah. And when we look upon Jesus, only a look at this Jesus, only a fresh vision of this Jesus will cause my healing to come. I've got to see him in the fullness of his glory. I can't see him as any demigod. I can't see him anymore as a part-time God. In you I live, move, and have my being. You define me. Hallelujah. You define me. And somebody needs to walk now into ministry. The ministry that God is trying to birth in you. You need some chains to be broken off your spirit today. And to see the Lord high lifted up the reason why you can't say yes to the lord is because you're too full of your own self god said i'm tired of you i want to see my glory in you there is no other purpose that you were created but to give me glory when i look at you i want to see my reflection when you open your mouth to worship me i want to hear my praise not your praise i don't want to hear your gifting I don't want to hear your gifting on the keyboard, on the drums. I want to hear me. Hallelujah. Is there anybody here today that wants to see the Lord high and lifted up? Won't you come to this altar right now? 
high. I want a fresh vision of Jesus. I want a fresh vision of Jesus. Will you come from the world right now? Will you come from yourself right now? Will you step from the shadows? It's time to walk into the light. Beautiful light. Come where few drops of mercy shines bright. Shine all around us by day and by night. It's time for that gifting to arise in you. Time for you to flow in it. The world is waiting on it. Time too serious now not to walk around with the power and the presence of God. Empty me, Jesus. I want to see you. As you come, just lift your hands before the Lord. It's no more I. It's no more I. Ooh, Shanda. It's no more I, but you, Christ, that lives inside. It's no more I. It's the power of the crucified life. He wants you to live the crucified life. Broken. Stripped of you. Strip me, Jesus. Come on. Say, strip me, Jesus, of me. I'm sick of my old self. Mm, Shanda. I'm sick of me. I want your glory. Hallelujah. I want you to transform me. I want you to mold me. Come on, begin to cry out. Begin to cry out. Yikashanda. Begin to cry out to the Holy Ghost. Come on, expose your heart to him. Watch him work. Watch him strip away you. Hallelujah. Jesus. 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 I have made you too small in my eyes. Oh Lord, forgive me. And I have believed in the life that you were not able to help. Lift your voice to the Holy Ghost and sing. Be magnified, O oh Lord. You are highly exalted. And there is nothing you Oh Lord, 
We worship. Hey. Oh, Lord. Come on, lift your voice. Be magnified. Oh. Begin to expose your spirit to the Holy Ghost. Less of me and more of you, Jesus. Less of me. Just lose myself, Lord. Let me lose myself and find it, Lord, in Thee. Let myself be slain, my friend. See only Thee. See you. 
to be baptized in Jesus name you want to follow the Lord you want to walk with him on that high mountain you want to go up you want to go up 
go up before the Lord. Any backslider here that wants to be restored? Anybody here want to be baptized in Jesus' name? Just meet us on this side. If you want to be baptized, I pray. That come mm-hmm. into my heart, Lord Jesus. Okay. Anybody want to be baptized? You want to be baptized? Somebody want to be baptized in Jesus' name? Somebody shout. Somebody shout. All right. You, both of you, or just your name? You, your son, your brother, sister and brother want to be baptized in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. She wants to climb the high mountain. Mm. Hallelujah. She's tired of the world. Thank you, Is there Lord. anybody else here that's tired of the world? Sick of yourself, sick of the world, sick of the system. My God. You want Jesus and my Jesus God, alone and his name to be on you. You want to see him and him alone. Hallelujah. Will you come? Will you come and stand with her as we pray? Thank you, Jesus. You want to be baptized in Jesus' name? Thank you, Lord. Come before it's too late. Time is running out. Mm-hmm. And that mountain represents also the rapture. It's on the mountain that there is going to be a, ch- a rapture, a change. The Bible said our vile body, a mortal body shall be transformed. Changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. So if you're not on the high mountain of God right now, you're going to miss the rapture. <laughs> if you're not baptized in Jesus' name, you're going to miss the rapture. If you're not walking right with God, you're going to miss. And I, the preacher man, if I don't walk right with God, I'm going to miss the rapture. No time for valley Christianity. Mountain top we are dealing with. Mountain top. Your morality, your principles must be higher than the world. Except your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees. Jesus said you cannot enter in. Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Except your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees. You cannot enter in. There's a blood covering. Hey, Holy Ghost. No weapon formed. Holy Ghost. Yes, Lord. Wrap with your blood. In the name of Jesus. Wrap with your blood. Jesus. Holy Ghost. Yes, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Yes, no weapon. Ika shanda, rule of Oshaya. He lava shanda, rule of Oshaya. He lava shanda. Jesus, Holy Ghost. Ika shanda, Holy Ghost. Demons are running right now. Hallelujah. Jesus, Holy Ghost. Yes. Blood covering. Blood covering. Hallelujah. We receive it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Could we get a few officers just to lay hands on these as we pray? Yes, yes. Come officers. They want to be baptized in Jesus' name. God can fill them with the Holy Ghost between right here, the council room and the pool. My God. Yes, officers, come lay your hands. Come, go back a little, sir. Go back a little. I want the officers to lay hands. Believe God for something. Just step back a little, sir. Step back a little. Come. In Jesus' name. Come, officers. And pray for them. I'm going to seal them with the blood. No demon shall have them. No devil shall have their mind. Hallelujah. Come on, plead the blood of Jesus over their mind. The mind belongs to Jesus. Holy Ghost. Come on, church, begin to pray. Everybody stand in military order. Come on, no time for sightseeing, tourists. It's not a tourist attraction. This is church. Power. Holy Ghost and power. Jesus. 19. Come on, lay your hand on her forehead right there. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Spirit of Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. 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 Pray, pray, church. Pray. Pray, pray, pray. Let me born again. Pray, pray, pray. Holy Ghost, let her be born again of the water and of the spirit. 
saturate their souls with the Holy Ghost and fire. Jesus, we plead the blood over their minds. Let no demon take away and snatch away their faith, their mind. We bind your fowls of the ear. We cripple you. We rip you out of the atmosphere over them. This word of faith that we have spoken shall not be unfruitful. It shall, it shall bring forth according to the will of God. It shall bring forth the peaceable fruit of righteousness in their spirit. It shall work and it shall keep them. Hallelujah. Jesus, keep them from the world. Sanctify them. Holy Ghost, charge them up with the Holy Ghost and fire. Holy Ghost, raise them up. We pray for this congregation, all of us, that we might be ready for the war. Ready for the war. Holy Ghost, get Bethel ready for the war. Wrap us with the garments of war. Wrap the choir with the garments of war. Wrap the ministers. The garments of war. Lord, we are lazy. Oh, we are lazy, Jesus. We are slothful in your business. We're not fervent in the business. Help us, Lord, to repent before you. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost, and get up on the high mountain of God. The high mountain of prayer and fasting and meditation on the word of God. The high mountain of vision and revelation and faith. Pull us to the high mountain, the high mountain. Lord Jesus, except we go up, we shall perish with the flood of the wicked. Oh, hallelujah. Lift us up, God. Bear us on eagles' wings. In the name of Jesus. We declare today that we are the army of the transformed. Transformed. Changed. Not fake Christians. Not pretentious or hypocrites. We are the transformed generation. That will reveal your glory to the earth. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Yes, Lord. Let there be a covenant. Let everybody in here who is serious make a covenant right now to join this army of the transformed. Those who are leaving the valley, heading for the mountains. Come on, make a covenant in your spirit. If you can. That today you are in the army of the transformed. You're different. Your talk and your walk is going to be different. Serious time. A serious time, Bethel. Serious time. Serious war. Serious, 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 serious things. Not the joke anymore. It's not a joke. Demons are real. The war is real. Shanda. Holy Ghost, the oppression is real. The depression is real. Hallelujah. And accept the anointing, stir up in your belly. Hallelujah. Accept the anointing, consume you. Demons will sit down beside you and, and live beside you. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Somebody open your mouth and say, stir up Holy Ghost in me. Stir up your fire, God. Stir up. Stir up. Hallelujah. Stir up Holy Ghost. Stir up. Fire. Open your mouth. Fire. Put your head top, say Holy Ghost, and fire. Put your seat, say Holy Ghost, and fire. Anoint yourself, say Holy Ghost, and fire. Put your belly, say Holy Ghost, and fire. Put your throat, say Holy Ghost, and fire. Put your lips, say Holy Ghost, and fire. Woo, my God, my God, my God. Lay your hand on your neighbor, say Holy Ghost, and fire. Lay your hand on your children, say Holy Ghost, and fire. No demon shall have your children. Hallelujah. Lay your hand on your husband and say, Holy Ghost on fire. Mashanda. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Somebody jump in the spirit. Somebody begin to run in the spirit. Holy Ghost on fire. War. We declare war. Bethel say war. Blood of Jesus. Blood on fire. Blood on fire. We say blood on fire. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost, we're taking this war to the enemy's camp. No retreat, no surrender. Hallelujah. No time for retreat camp. Blood and fire. Blood and fire. Blood and fire. Hallelujah. Hey, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. The fire of God is here. One more time. Open your mouth. Say, Holy Ghost and fire. Hallelujah. Woo! My God, my God, the glory of God is here. Glory of God is sitting on the choir. Glory of God is sitting on you. Hallelujah. 
Holy Ghost and fire. Jesus. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Jesus. Who shunned the Holy Ghost and fire. Daring a demon to walk up in this fire. Hallelujah. There's a new anointing coming on you. Come on, ushers. Every usher, lift up your hand. Every usher in the church, lift up your hand. Say, Holy Ghost and fire. Block the window. Block the door. Hallelujah. Don't let no demon walk past you. Hallelujah. Blood and fire. Deliverance is coming. Hallelujah. Oh my God, my God. Sister Marlene. Glory is coming on you. Lift your hands. New anointing is coming. Yes, man. Lift your hands, Sister Marlene. Open your mouth. Say, Holy Ghost and fire. Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The glory of the Lord is rich in his house. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You may go back to your seats. Hallelujah. Bless God. We thank God for a wonderful time in his house today. Thank him for his blessings. Hallelujah. Let us just continue to walk in the spirit. Hallelujah. Glory to God.